given you. And may that light God has given you shine clearer and brighter and further than it ever has been shining before. That's the prayer of our heart. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Joseph. Good evening, friends. You can be seated. With the welcome like that, anyone ought to preach. (laughs) It is indeed a great privilege to be here tonight. And this wonderful crossroads of America in this great shrine to the memorial left here to a a man who loved Jesus Christ, the late E. Howard Cato, and the always something when I think of Mr. Cato stands out as something he used to say, we come to make this a better place to live. Harder to do right, and e- or harder to do wrong, and easier to do right. Something on that, or he used to say on his broadcast. How I appreciate the ministry of Brother Cato. I have his book at home. I, when I come back, I believe the name of it is "How I Come Back." How in the basement here, he's seen the picture of his mother laying down there when it just about lost his tabernacle and how the courage raised any to come back. I got lots of respects for a man when he does make a mistake he's got courage enough to rise and try again. We're all going to make mistakes. The best makes mistakes. But a soldier is not one who will lay down when he's knocked down but will raise up again. Amen. We used to sing a little song, let me rise and try again, and I like that, for I have made many mistakes in my life as we all have, but I've always been thankful to God for grace to let me rise and try again. I believe the song is entitled, Forgive Me, Lord, and Try Me One More Time. I think that's it. I'll be yours if you will be mine. (laughs) If I fall or if I sin, let me rise and try again. Take me back and try me one more time. I love that. That's why I'm trusting that God will do to this great body of Christ here on earth tonight who has... We all are guilty of, of doing things wrong, but may we who are gathered here tonight along with the rest of the great visible body of Christ here on earth, may we rise and try again. I'm trusting that this convention will be one of the most outstanding conventions that this group has had at any time. Not because that I am with you again this time, but because that I think it's time that the great church of the living God stood to her feet and shook herself. Got ready. We're, tonight, we're at the city that's called the Crossroads of America. Not only that, but the church is at the crossroads. And we're nearing the time when Jesus will come, I believe. I'm looking for that time. Trying to live and prepare for that hour. Now, it's my lot, by the grace of God and the courtesy of welcome a few people to preach to you the Lord Jesus, him crucified, and to pray for the sick children of God. As I said on the monument steps last night, I did not come to take the doctor's place, but I come to pray for God's children, the doctor's patients, and my friends. I believe that prayer changes things. I've seen death be drove back by prayer, and life take its place. And if you're eyewitnesses of these things and know what you're talking about, I tell you, it'll make you appreciate prayer. I don't have anything within myself to heal people. I get a lot of criticism by saying that. Said, someone said the other day, he said, Brother Branham, the ministers all say, cast out devils, and you're always asking Jesus to do it. Jesus said, ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. I like that. I can't do it, but he can if I'll ask him. That's my duty. It's our duties to believe this. Now, the last 
few weeks has been a change that uh, the Lord has given me in the ministry. The first time I ever tried to pray for the sick in the manner that I shall start here in the tabernacle, the Lord willing, was a few days ago in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, at the ice arena. When I was in Maine with my recording boys here less than a month ago, the Lord revealed to me there in the north woods of Howe that I could retain my strength and yet with the visions and pray for the sick. And I tried it in Saskatoon and it was marvelous. I believe the best meeting I've had in America in the past seven or eight years. Tonight, being it was kind of getting used and acquainted, I thought we just had the, maybe if the Lord leads, the, that type of prayer line or the regular or whatever it is. But that's not the main thing we're here for. We're here to try to get every sinner saved that's in Indianapolis or around about if we can. I think too much stress has been put on divine healing. I think the sickest body I know of is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's needing healing. And it takes conventions like this where men of different denominations set together as brothers. That's what does the healing. The great ransomed church of God should be one heart and one accord. God will live in it. And now, if I have been asked to speak at the afternoon meetings, Tomorrow I have so many appointments that I don't think I could make it maybe tomorrow afternoon, I'm not sure, but the Lord willing, the following afternoon, I'd like to be a little alone later in the afternoon when the service would be going here so that I can pray and concentrate and wait for that service tomorrow night. I want it to be the best. I, I, I want to do my best. I want to be found doing my best. Amen. What time I have left, I, I want it every hour to count for Christ. And I purposed in my heart, by the grace of God, to do everything that I know how for the kingdom of God and the coming of Christ. Pray for me also. I'm on a decision right now. Great services are set for overseas. Thousands times thousands are waiting. And I have a stop in my heart about going. You pray for me. God will direct me right. Now, just before we open this blessed old Bible, let's just bow our heads to the author a moment. O oh, our blessed Lord, we most humbly come into thy presence in the name of thy beloved Son, the Lord Jesus. And we pray for divine guidance tonight and thy mercies to rest upon us. Many of your children are perhaps sitting here sick and needy. Maybe some of them are sick in their soul. I pray that the Holy Spirit will supply everything that we have need of this night as we yield our self to thee as vessels to work in. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Just for a, a short text tonight. I'm sure this clock's wrong. It's got two o'clock. <laughs> I haven't got that far along, surely. <laughs> but try not to hold you long. But I want to put a most big part of the time in the prayer line. And now over in the book of Jude, in the third verse, I wish to read this for a text. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. May the Lord add his blessings to that reading. This is a kind of an unusual text. It's an unusual statement because we were asked to contend. And yet the Bible said there should not be contentions among us. But we notice that not only to contend, but to earnestly contend. Contention's all right if it's for the right thing. Right. And he said, 
to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Now, you hear so many people say today, Oh, divine healings against my faith. Uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is against my faith. There's only one faith. And that faith doesn't come by joining church. That faith comes by hearing and that of the Word of God. Amen. So if we are bid to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, that faith should not come out of a creed book, but it should come out of God's Bible. For faith cannot rest upon the shifting sand of man's theology, but it can only rest upon the eternal rock of God's unchangeable Word. That's the only place that faith can sufficiently rest. No matter how much something else, how real it looks, how godly it looks, it must come from the Word of the living God, because faith only comes by hearing and hearing of the Word. So there's many things that looks appealing to the eye. I have often thought of seeing great shrines of, the, of different religions and how beautiful they could be. I think of the, the temple of Diane in the Bible. That it's claimed that it was more beautiful than the temple of Solomon, made out of marble and inlaid with gold of the goddess Diane. Of Ephesus. But the looks doesn't count. It's what God's Word says. There is the way that seemeth right unto a man. So then faith could not rest upon looks. Then faith can only find its place in the Word, and we were asked to contend earnestly for the faith once delivered unto the saints. And the word saints comes from the word sanctified one. And sanctify is a compound word which means cleanse and set apart. And the vessels that was put on the altar cleansed the vessels. The altar sanctified the vessels and they were set apart for the service of the temple. And a vessel of God, which we are, is sanctified through the blood of the Lord Jesus and set apart for the service of God. A few weeks ago down in Mexico, or a few months ago rather, in Mexico City, I was having a revival. And oh, how those poor People stood from nine o'clock at morning until nine at night before I got there. And each day they'd stand like sheep holding each other up in the direct rays of that southern sun. So hungry. That's the reason today that this great fabulous nation of ours, America, doesn't receive the things that we should receive is because we're not hungry enough. When we really get down to business, then God will go to acting. And they were standing against each other, mothers with their little sick babies, and holding up their loved ones, standing in the sun just in order to hold a place all day long. And when I had to be let over a great high wall to come down to get into the uh, arena type place where the meetings were being held, taking me up by rope ladder and let me down. And as I looked, after the night, one night there, an old Mexican man came up and he'd had no shoes on in his 
beard was gray and hardly any clothes to cover himself. He was blind. And as he came towards me, he pulled out a little set of beads and began to repeat a prayer. I had him to put them up. I said, that's not necessary, brother. I look at the old man and his feet wrinkled in the dust. And I thought, maybe the man never had a good meal in all of his life. And they work hard just for meager little living. And I looked at his feet and I put my foot up the side of his. I thought maybe I could just, without the audience seeing it, slip my shoes off and give them to him. But his feet was much larger. And I put my shoulders to his, see if I could give him my coat. And I thought that poor man in all this trouble, yet fate has been so ill to him to hear he staggers in darkness. Such a cruel enemy we have, the devil. And just entering into that sympathy with him, put my arms around him and asked our kind Heavenly Father if he would restore the sight to this poor blind man. All of a sudden his arms went around me and he screamed to the top of his voice. He could see, he could see. Up and down the platform he went rejoicing. The next night, the clothes were laying a rick as long as this platform here of just old coats and shoes and hats and how they ever know whose was whose, I don't know. The people just so that if you would pass by, they believe that they'd get well. I thought, oh, I don't find that type of faith in America. Because you've got things too easy. And another thing, that was virgin territory. And here it's one thing and another thing. I believe this and I believe that. Christianity so-called has too many loose ends. That's right. But there's really only one faith. Last evening on the temple or on the monument steps, an old brother came by and threw his arms around me and was weeping. And he was standing around, could hear him. He said, I want to hug you, Brother Branham. Said, you prayed for me up in Lima, I believe it was, and said, the Lord heal me of cancer. And I've never had the opportunity to express my feelings to you for praying that prayer for me. Grateful. If we were only grateful enough. But if the Methodists don't want us, we'll go over to the Baptists. The Baptists don't want us, we'll go to the Pentecostal. The Assemblies don't want us, we'll go to the United. We just keep on one after the other and we become mission trotters and hardly know what we do believe. Brother, what this great Church needs us back to the Word, back to God. The old-fashioned prayer meetings and, and the old-fashioned singing, the old-fashioned gospel, and back to an old-fashioned faith in God, a saving experience by the Son of God. The next evening... At the little meeting in Mexico, some 20,000 accepted Christ. When they seen a little baby, the mother, a little Catholic woman, she was so frantic. They tell me she'd been in the audience since about 3 p.m. And her little baby the day before the doctor had said was dying. And sometime in the afternoon, it passed from this life. And she was in the audience and it was raining right hard. And she standing out there was frantic. Brother Espinosa and some of the brethren give out the prayer cards and Billy, my boy. And the little woman did not get a prayer card because she couldn't get in close enough. It was just 
plaited together. But she was determined to get into the prayer line and she was screaming. Billy come over and he said, Dad, you'll have to go down to that woman or do something. Said, there isn't enough ushers to hold her out of the line. <laughs> she had the little baby wrapped in under her arm and a little beautiful little lady of about 25, I guess, or not much over that. And she was screaming Padra just as loud as she could to have mercy for the baby. I said to Brother Moore, Brother Jack Moore, I said, go down and pray for that the baby that'll satisfy her because it wouldn't be right for me to leave here now to go down there with the rest of them. Just as I started to continue the message, I saw a little baby standing out here before me. I said, just a moment, Brother Moore. And went down to the little lady and had her to bring the baby there. It was all wrapped in a blanket and real soaking wet. Now, I cannot say I only have the testimony. Laying hands upon the little blanket and asking God to be merciful to that little woman who had such faith to believe. And the little form was quiet. And no more than the words were said till a scream and a yell come from under that blanket. And she just went frantically. And away she went screaming and going on. The next day I left Mexico. I never got it exactly right until Brother Espinosa. We can't, do not make those statements without it being authentic. So Brother Espinosa traced the woman down, found who she was, and found that it was true by the doctor that the baby had perished and died. And the baby is well tonight. That's by the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. <laughs> Operating in a Catholic woman. <laughs> That's it. The next day the press asked me, did I think that their saints could do the same thing? I said, if they were saints and a living, they can. <laughs> it's the sanctified vessel that set us apart for God's service that God dwells in. A few nights ago in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, there was a little boy who came to the platform and he whispered to my ear, I'm a Catholic. He had a hunch on his back. He said, we believe in divine healing. I said, but son, God honors that. But you take it from a statue. Touch some statue. Or pray to some dead person. I said, but that's a little different than I believe the Bible teaches it. I said, here's the way we believe divine healing. We believe that God is eternal, and anything that has a beginning has an end. But God had no beginning, so therefore he has no end. And the world was made for him because he is the creator. He made it out of things he had not to make with just his spoken word. It come into existence. And there's only one type of healing, that's divine healing. All healing is divine healing. Doctors have AIDS, God's the healer. Doctor sets a bone, God does the healing. Doctor gives medicine to kill the rats in you, but God patches up the holes <laughs> that the rats eat. <laughs> now, only one healing, divine healing. And I said, then Jesus said, that we that believe on him and hear his word have eternal life. And eternal life is the life of God. And when the man is born again, he becomes a part of God and is absolutely imperishable. He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath eternal everlasting life and shall never come into condemnation but pass from death unto life. We become a part 
of God because we're born of him and the spirit of God that dwells in us is immortal. It had no beginning and it'll have no end. And that operating in a man gives him faith in his maker. The same maker that stood on the earth one day and said to the tree, No man eateth from thee. The next day the tree was wilting. And Jesus said, Have faith in God, for I say unto you, If thou shalt say to this mountain, Be moved. And don't doubt, but believe that what you say shall come to pass. You can have what you say. I said, it's God's eternal spoken word by born-again people. By prayer, asking God, and God's obligated to his word. When that real, not put on, not make believe, but a real settled faith is in a man's heart that don't vary from God's word a bit. It is God's word being spoken by mortal lips. That's the faith that was once delivered to the saints. The little boy couldn't comprehend it very much. I told him to put a string around him. And I said, if that string hasn't shrank three inches by tomorrow night, I'm a false prophet. In a few moments, another little hunchback come, your little arms hanging down. I said, son, I'm going to ask you to do the same thing the other boy. And I asked him, and he said, well, Brother Branham said, we're a poor family. And they were from all the way from northern British Columbia. Said, we are out of money and we've got to go back tomorrow. I said, come here, sonny boy. And putting the arm around the little hunchback, the big lump over his shoulder, with hands laid on the little fella, just obeying what God said do to pray for the little fella. And all of a sudden, I thought something happened under my hand. And as I looked at his little eyes, they were just bright and snappy. And I said, didn't something happen? He said, yes, sir, it did. I said, raise up your little arms. And there went his arm up, and there was no more hunch on his back than nothing. He was perfectly normal and well. What was it? The faith that was once delivered unto the saints operating in a child. Certainly. There was a blind woman came up. I don't know just how many years she had been blind. And one praying for her, the boy sure has her testimony. But it had been a number of years. They led her to the platform just totally blind, speaking to her of the Lord Jesus who had healed her way 1900 years ago and asked if she had faith to believe it. She said, I do. And when praying for her, her eyes come open on the platform. She walked off the platform and typed her own testimony and gave it to me. What was it? The faith that was once delivered to the saints operating in a blind woman. Now, if it's no more than what would be right to try to say if we are to contend for such a faith, and the faith was once delivered to the saints or the sanctified ones, then we should go back to the Bible and find out what those sanctified ones did and what kind of a faith that they had. When God called Christ from the grave and he ascended up, Jesus left word to his church to go into all the world and preach the gospel, these signs shall follow them that believe. Signs was to follow the church how far unto all the world. Some people want to limit that faith to a a creed. Some want to limit it to a denomination. But I say this upon the authority of God's Word. There is no limit to the faith of God that He left for His church because He said all things are possible to them that believe. It's not limited. 
And it was not just for the disciples. Peter said on the day of Pentecost in the second chapter of Acts, he said, Repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And that faith that was once delivered to the saints, as long as God's calling, that faith is ready for the believer if you have, if you only receive it. Notice, now, Jesus was the one, the center of Christianity. And when he was here on earth, I've had this week in my office and weeks following or before about just praying for the sick. Some said, Brother Branham, I believe you've lost your power with God. Well, I had no power to begin with. The only thing I had was the grace of God. And that was given by God. I believe the Bible teaches us that prayer changes things. It's a prayer of faith that saves the sick. Prayer. Now, we find out in the day Jesus never claimed that he was a healer, but let's just notice what he did say about it. And we know that St. John 14, 7, Jesus promised the body of believers would do the same works that he did. And when he left the earth, he left the outline or the shape the body of Christ should be in. Now, but as soon as the first round of the apostles ceased, then they went to running little roads out, adding something, taking something away, adding this and taking that. They broke it up, denominated it. Oh, they've done everything to it. It's become, there's hardly enough left so you can tell it's a body of Christ. It's more like a lodge. It's freaked. Not because of the will of God, but because of the tradition of man. And Jesus said, in vain you worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of man. Now there is a faith that was delivered to the saints, and we're to earnestly contend for this faith. Let's see what the faith was. Jesus introduced it. When he first came, he went about doing good. If I told you tonight that the spirit of some person was in me, you'd expect me to impersonate that person because the very life in me would be that life. If I told you the spirit of some great criminal was in me, well, you would expect me to be a criminal. If I told you the spirit of a painter was in me, you'd expect me to hold a brush right. When Elijah's spirit come upon Elisha, Elisha was just like Elijah. And when that same spirit come on John the Baptist at nine years old, it even drove him into the wilderness. The spirit that was in you controls you. And if the spirit of Christ is in us, the body of Christ will be Christ-like in its dealings, in its actions. Whatever it is, it'll be Christ-like. It'll do the works of Christ. God wants to work in the body of Christ as he did in the physical corporal body of the Lord Jesus. He wants to work in this body of Christ if he can only get them to a place where they'll stand still long enough that he can place them on the foundation of his word so he can work. God cannot work contrary to his word. That's where the church needs to come back to the Bible, back to the faith. Now, let's look at it a minute. When Jesus, in his first beginning of his ministry, we find a man by the name of Nathaniel who got saved and went and called a fellow named, or Philip went and called Nathaniel, said, come see who we found. This is Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, and he found him under a tree praying. And when he found him, he said, come see. 
I tell you, when this Hebrew raised up, he said, Now, could there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? He said, You come and see. That's the best answer anybody can give. Come see for yourself. Don't come critical. Come and sit down and listen. Watch it. If it's not according to the Word, don't have nothing to do with it. If it is God, God will work in His Word. Because His Word's a seed. Every promise is a seed. It'll produce just exactly what God said it would, if it's put in the right ground. And then on his road over, Philip probably instructed him and told him, Now when you come up, come up believing. Go up there and just stand in the line. Watch and see what takes place. Oh, I can hear Nathaniel say, I don't know whether I can believe that or not. Well, just go and find out. Come on, go with me. And around the mountain they came and they found Jesus praying for the sick or whatever his duty was to do that day. And when they found him, Jesus seen Nathaniel coming and he said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. And this Hebrew was astonished. How did he know me? He never seen me in his life. He said, Rabbi, whence knowest thou me? Jesus said, Before Philip called you when you were under the tree, I saw you. I saw you. What eyes? Thirty miles around the mountain. I saw you when you were under the tree. Why, he said, Rabbi, you're the Son of God. You're the King of Israel. Later, the Jews said, that's Beelzebub. He's a fortune teller. Jesus said, now you speak that against the Son of Man, I'll forgive you. But when the Holy Spirit has come to speak against that, it'll never be forgiven you in this world or the world to come. Oh, I passed another birthday the other day. I told him I was 25 years old. Somebody looked at me. I said, I'm only counting the years I was converted. The rest of them doesn't count anyhow. That's right. But physically, I was 48. And as I see that if I'm ever going to do something for God, I've got to do it now. For I see the signs and the writing on the wall. I see the church going into its laodicean condition. I see little isms and fashions and little sensations scattering the church and separating it, making it worse than ever. Then I know it's time I came. Help it. Something in me makes me scream out back to the Word. Right. Oh, church of the living God. How can it be? The last few days I've been torn out early the morning praying. And I said to God the other morning, I said, God, I don't know what more you can do. I have done as you have told me as far as I know. The people constantly drifting, drifting. I said, the next thing, you'll have to move yourself. You've got to put a faith and confidence in those people's hearts to believe it. Or all I can do will never change it. Then I wonder at this, if in our great nation and our great fatness of our lands that we have smothered ourselves down on our little creeds and denominations till God has rose it up to place it before the people to only bring judgment. Right? Christ passed through the land. He said, if I do not the works of him that sent me, then believe me not. But if I do the works of God, though you don't believe me, believe the works. And if that great body of Christ did those kind of works in that day, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His body produces the same works. He said, well, did Isaiah speak? We have eyes and can't see and ears we can't hear. He said, though he had done so many works of God before them, yet they could not believe. I wonder if these great shaking campaigns that's crossed the nation, not only nation, but nations, and the great signs and wonders and people still reject it. I wonder if it isn't to fulfill the scripture as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Think of that during this campaign. 
Sit still a minute and look towards heaven. Thank God, what more could you do? Then may the Holy Spirit shake your conscience, shake you on the inside so you can realize that we're at the end. These things are to accompany the coming of the Son of God. These things are the forerunner of this great end that we are. And the faith that was once delivered to the saints, word by word, sign by sign, is accomplished by the Holy Spirit and gifted man. And the church still rents and tears. You don't belong to my organization. I have nothing to do with it. Oh, you're only fat in hell by doing so. It's right. Notice, he went up on the road, going to Jericho. He went around Samaria. That's all the way. But he sat down and sent his disciples away. A woman come out to get some water. He said, bring me a drink. She looked over and seen that Jew. That wasn't customary for Jew. The segregation in the land. She said, it's not customary for Jews to ask Samaritans such. We have no dealing. He said, but woman, if you knew who you were speaking to, you'd ask me for a drink. Oh, my. Only one could ever say that. You'd ask me for a drink. I'd give you waters that you don't come here to Jacob's well to draw. Oh, she said, the well's deep and you have nothing to draw with. What was he doing? He was contacting her spirit. After he found out what her trouble was, he said, go get your husband and come here. She said, I don't have any husband. He said, I know you don't have any husband. You've got five. And the one you're living with now is not your husband. Therefore, you said, right. Look what the woman said. What did the Jew say when that was performed on the Jew? Why, the Jew said, well, you're the son of God. But the criticizing Jew said he's Beelzebub. See, they had to redo that to receive the condemnation. Many of you historians know what happened to them later. When Titus seized the walls of Jew- in Jerusalem, they eat their own children, eat the grass off the ground, the bark off the trees, and they killed them and slaughtered them till the blood ran out of the streets. Certainly, judgment. When you spurn mercy, there's only one thing left, and that's judgment. When the mercies of God has been presented and people turn from it, there's nothing left but divine judgment. And now notice what's taking place. This woman said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. She said, We know that when the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, he'll tell us these things. But she couldn't understand who he was. Look at that sign she was looking for. A man, a man that would know those things, could discern the thoughts of the heart. The Bible said, Daniel said, let it be known unto you, O king, that there's a God in heaven who knows the thoughts of man. He knows the secrets of the heart. Certainly he does. And they know that God, what he would be, and they know that Jesus would be him or the Messiah would be him. And when she seen that act done, she said, you must be a prophet, for a prophet is a potion of God. She said, Ah, you must be a prophet, for we know that when Messiah cometh, he'll do this. He'll tell us all things. He said, I'm he that speaks to you. Oh, my. She ran into the city and said, Come see a man who even knows the very thoughts of my heart and told me the things I've done. Isn't this the very Messiah? Notice again, he didn't claim to be a healer. He didn't say, I'll go to heal you. Come up here. When he went through a great mass of people and didn't heal, but one man laid on a pallet. He'd been looking for him till he found him and then healed him and went away. St. John 5, the 19th verse when the Jews question. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself. The Son can do nothing in himself. But what he sees the Father doing, it doesn't lay in man to do these things. It's God alone can do it. Not what man does. Oh, you can be mentally worked up. You can be an emotion. But I'm not talking about that. 
I'm talking about a faith that was once delivered to the saints to settle something. No matter how you feel or what sensation you have, you have any or do not have none. It's settled on God's eternal word. For it's the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Not that this brother prayed for him and this one cast the devil out and this done that other. Mental emotions can do that. But when that real genuine faith that God spoke the truth is settled in the person's heart, it's eternal. Amen. Feeling has nothing to do with it no more. God said so. Then that faith is stable. No matter what takes place, how you feel, where you get sick or whether you do or not, that has nothing to do with it. It's that faith that was once delivered to the saints that they believe. They seen the works of God. They know it was God. It was vindicated to them. Jesus said, if I do not the works of God, then don't believe me. But he did the works of God. And he said, I do not do nothing in myself till I see the Father do it first. Whatever I see the Father doing, then the Son does likewise. He said, He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. That was the church. Christ left this. That his church would have his spirit. And the Spirit of Christ will perform and act and live like Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. How can we segregate ourselves when Christ taught brotherly love by this? All men will know you're my church when you've got love one for another. Today we have little sensations and little isms that breaks us up and separates and little evidences and little everything else that separates us. It shows that we've never come to that place where we're completely sold out to Almighty God and stand on the pillar of His eternal Word and say, I now claim the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Not from your lips, but from your heart. Not an intellectual conception, but a born-again experience that makes you a changed creature. That's the faith that was delivered to the saints. That's, right. That's why you see people, some of them are on the housetop all the time. Others say, well, I was healed yesterday, but bless God, I lost my healing. He never had it to begin with. That's right. And that word is once anchored. All the devils in hell couldn't shake it away from you. Upon this rock I'll build my church in the gates of hell, came prevail against it. Right. What was it? The spiritual revealed truth of Jesus Christ. Peter said, Who does man say, I the Son of Man am? Some said, Moses and Elias and the prophets and so forth. They said, Who do you say? Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, Blessed art thou, Simon, the son of Jonas, for flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. You never learned it in a seminary. Neither did you learn it in any domination. Neither did it come from a creed book. But my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed this to you. And upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell can't prevail against it. The faith that was once delivered to the saints. The works that I do shall you also. And that great body, we're not to be conformed with this world, but be transformed. The body of Christ is a new creature. And when the old things has passed away and the world has went out of us, and we become new creatures in Christ, our whole affection is on things above. Then we look to Christ. We look not at the things of the world. Here, it's this simple. There's the picture of Mrs. Cadle on one side. There's the picture of her son on the other side. When you're looking this way, you're thinking of Mrs. Cadle. When you're looking on the other side, you're thinking of the picture. On this side, you're thinking of E. Howard Cadle. If you're looking at Mr. Taylor, you're looking at the clock, you're looking at the flag. Whatever you're looking at, that's what you're thinking about. But when you go to look to symptoms and what, what my pastor will say, I can't cooperate with that. I don't know. Oh, brother, you can never get anything from God like that. You've got to set your faith on God's eternal word and say, Thus saith the Lord. There I stand. What will my pastor say? What will my denomination say? Will they excommunicate me? What difference does it make? Set your faith. Heart and your faith in God. Upon this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of hell can't prevail against it. It showed it would try, but it won't prevail. Now, the faith that was once delivered to the saints. If the body of Christ literally, when it was in Christ Jesus, when that Spirit of God was in Christ, a little while he said, And the world will see me no more. Yet ye shall see me. 
For I'll be with you to the end of the world. The works that I do shall you do also. Even greater than this shall you do. For I go to my Father. There you are. That's the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Christian friends, let's not be children any longer. We have no need of being children. We're adults. Quit running after this and running after that and joining this and joining that. Come join your heart with the Word of God and with the Holy Spirit. That's the thing. Stand there and say, God, I believe you. I believe today with all my heart that the messages and the things that God has did across the nations is only to bring condemnation. Do you realize that it's across the sea out of where a madman sits? That the only thing you'd have to do in ten minutes from now to wipe Indianapolis from the earth is to press a button. A rocket would fly through the air and a hydrogen bomb. They said they had one the other day would explode the whole ocean. That's all it had. A mad, crazy people. Sitting there in that condition. And the gospel has been preached. The real jam- Oh, I know. At Jambres and Moses, with, uh, Jambres and Jambres withstood Moses, the two-headed god of Egypt. We have it. That only claims there's a real one. And that's true. That only claims there's a real genuine. There's a real God Almighty. There's a real Holy Spirit. There's a real faith that was once delivered to the saints. That same faith that was delivered to the saints will operate through God's Holy Word. That's the way it did then. That's the way it'll do now. Why do accept the substitute when the whole skies are full of real, genuine, Pentecostal blessings? Why should we try anything else? Let's return to Christ in this convention. Let's fill our hearts full of His love. He stands trying His best to pour it into us. But we won't stand still long enough. we got so many pretty things we have to see, so many fashions. The devil just wants you to do like Eve. Stop for a minute. Don't you pay any attention to Him. Keep your eyes on Christ, your ears on the Word, and keep moving on. Yeah. That's the faith that was once delivered to the saints. I declare to you tonight by the Scripture that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe that we're at the end of the time. I believe that judgment is at hand. I might be old-fashioned, might be considered a crank for saying this, but I believe that the coming of Christ is past due. I believe it's way past due because God, like he was in the Andalusian world, he's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all might come to repentance. Oh, friend of mine, return to Christ. Return with your heart. Return with all you've got. And come to him. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe. Now, if Jesus Christ, God's Son, said, These signs shall follow them that believe. The works that I do shall you also. These things that I do, you'll do it also. I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Then the disciples followed right behind Christ, doing the very same things that he did. That's right. Exactly. They when he found out that Peter and John were ignorant and unlearned man. They wasn't educated, neither were they smart. But they had to take notice that they had been with Jesus. Because the spirit that was in Jesus was in them, doing the same things Jesus did. Taking the same kind of a motive. And everything that Jesus had, that's what they had. They don't have to be smart. You don't have to have an education. You just have to have a willing heart. God sends his faith down, his power. Faith is power. And we're to earnestly contend for it. Now... If the Bible says, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, that's the truth or it is not the truth. That's right. If Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, he has to be the same in principle, the same in power, the same in compassion, the same Christ, or he's not the same. Right. Correct. And if he is the same and promised the same things that he did back there in his literal body, he would do here in this corporal body of his believers, these signs shall follow them that believe. The works that I do shall you also, more than this, for I go unto my Father. A little while the world won't see me anymore, yet ye shall see me, for I'll be with you even in you to the end of the world. Those are promises. Those are promises. A little while the world sees me no more, no matter what takes place. They'll never believe it. Just look what's taking place. I'm just a little teeny pebble to the great beach of great stones. But right in my own ministry, I have seen tens of thousands of people healed. The people are always complaining. We never seen a miracle. No wonder you can't see it. The Bible said you can't see it. 
You're blind. Willfully blind. If the Bible said you'll never see it no more, you won't see it. But he said, ye shall see me, the believer, for I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. The works that I do shall you also. There you are. It's before the work. Christ will come. You'll be the judge. But before he can bring judgment, he has to offer mercy to be a just God. And if he offers mercy and mercy is spurned, then there's nothing left but judgment. And you've judged yourself by rejecting him. Don't reject him anymore. Let us pray. As the minutes are passing, Lord, and our hearts are beating every time they beat, it's one less beat that it'll ever make. We're facing a great dark place out here called death. Each one of us, we don't know just when this heart will stop. We don't know what time that a missile may come whirling through the air. It's too late. Every speck of petroleum and moisture and what all that's in us will be taken away. But we have one blessed assurance. They never have, they never will be able to make a bomb that can touch that soul. It's immortal. It's a part of God. I'm so happy tonight, Lord, because that is possible. I pray to thee tonight, Heavenly Father, if there's some in here that does not have that spirit resting in them, may they purpose in their heart at this convention or at this very hour that they now will accept Christ and they will have this experience. They may have been church members for years. They may have tried to press on and live a good life. They've had difficult. They're up and down. Oh, God of such a one, I pray thee tonight, Lord, to settle it forever in their hearts just now. And see how simple it is, not with intellectual, but with their heart. Believe that Jesus Christ has raised from the dead and is present now to give them the desire of their hearts. While we have our heads bowed, would such a person in here would like to raise your hand and say, Brother Branham, remember me. I want to have the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Dwelling in me, would you do it? Say, pray for me. God bless you, sir. You, you, oh my. God bless you. At least two or three dozen hands or more. This little audience tonight. Is there another would like to say, God sees your hands. Sure he does. Brother Branham, remember me. I want that faith in me. I, I want, God bless you, lady. God bless you, brother, back there. God bless you here, my sister. You. Over to my right, God bless you, sister. You, you, you down here. God bless you and you, sister. All right. God bless you back there, my sister. I won't, Brother Branham. I know that we're living in the closing hours. What? Will I have a chance after this? No, sir. This is it. You may not have a chance after tonight. You may not have a chance after five minutes from now. How do I know? I do not. But there's one thing. That God is innocent. He's done everything that he promised to do. Just think, in my own little meetings, I've seen the blind, but the many receive their sight. The deaf, the dumb, the speak and talk. I've seen three definite cases, no, four now, four definite cases of people that had passed from this life, raised to life again. I've seen the Lord Jesus move right in on the scene of the people, and the very discerner of the thoughts of the mind. Just as he was in the Old Testament, just as he was in the New Testament, he is today the same yesterday, today, and forever. The scientific world took the picture of that great angel who's standing not five feet from where I'm standing now. That great light. You say, do you call that Jesus? It is Jesus. It was Jesus that led the children of Israel through the wilderness. We know that. It was a pillar of fire, a light. And he said, I come from God, I go to God. And after his crucifixion and his resurrection, Paul met him on the road down to Damascus. He was such a bright light till he put the apostles' eyes out. Sure, he's here now. The scientific world has proved it. The church knows it. God knows it. So what do they do? Continually on. Little differences and isms. Every little fantastic comes along. Separate themselves. Make denominations. Little cults. Oh, God be merciful. To a people that I love with all my heart. What can I do? What can I do? There's nothing I can do more. God's got to tell you that's the truth. I only tell it from his word. God confirms it here with that. Have faith in God. Now, Father, you've seen those hands that went up. Not less than 50. 
hands us up tonight that they wanted to be remembered, Lord, in prayer. Now I pray thee, most merciful God, with all my heart and my soul, that thou wilt this night receive those as you've seen them put their hands up. They're in such a condition. They realize that they've got to face the endless eternity. And I pray, God, that you'll never let them perish. May this be the time that the eternal God will place his spirit in their heart. And they will receive eternal life and be born anew right now. Right in their seats where they're sitting. God, you know their hearts. And may it happen just this moment. May from this hour on they be a changed person. May this convention be a convention that will seem like a great trip to heaven to them. Grant it, Father. And now, dear Jesus, we come now to the other part of the service. I have spoke at length in saying that we were commanded by the apostles and by the Bible to earnestly contend for the faith. I've tried to introduce to this little audience what the faith was, what they did by the faith. That you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Christ that lived in the body called Jesus is the same Logos tonight that lives in the body of the church. Performing the same things, living the same ways, loving the same ways, doing the same things, the same Spirit producing the same thing. The same Jesus yesterday, today, and forever. God, may, may you quicken that to the people's hearts and minds, from the least to the oldest. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Lord bless you. I think someday I've got to preach my last sermon. Someday I've got to stand at the pulpit the last time. I think of Brother Cato when he stood here his last time. I think of other men who stood here, men who's passed on, perhaps B.E. Rediger, many others who stood at this pulpit. They stood their last time, they gave their last testimony. Someday I'll give my last testimony. That's right. People don't, for now while we're small, we talk like we're at home, sitting over by the, the van, talking to each other. Can you understand what all this means? Can you see the day that we're living in? Can you see the loose ends of the church going out after this and after that? Denomination. Fantastic. Sensation. That has nothing to do with God's Word. The faith that was delivered to the saints of God's eternal Word. And they stay there. Christ has proved it. I believe He'll do it tonight. Now, you that raised your hands for a deeper walk or for more to receive Christ, I pray that God will give it to you. In a night or two, I have not asked them. We want to find a room here. We want to take you in there and tarry with you. If you haven't received the Holy Spirit, there's a place prepared for you in God's kingdom that God wants to bring you into it. And you can receive the Holy Ghost if you'll just believe. It's for believers. Now, it doesn't come this way, that way. Don't think about that. Wait till something comes in here that... Well, it, you'll know it when it comes. Stay there. It's a part of you. It's your life. Lord willing, one night this week I want to preach when the East meets the West. I pray. Tonight... I didn't know it was that late. I believe we'll just have the regular prayer line tonight, just like we usually do, and tomorrow night I'll come a little bit earlier and start the other. Hundred? Hundred? All right. Let's line a few people up. Which way shall we bring them? Around this way? All right. <clears throat> All right, let's stand up a few people. Now, I want to ask you something. Will you give me your undivided attention just for a few moments? You do that. Let's make this tonight. Is there a stranger here? It never was in my meeting before. Let's see your hands. Well, just think. Well, God bless you. That's fine. Now, let me take you to record now. I do not claim to be a healer or have any power to heal people. And honestly, in my heart, I don't believe there's a man on the face of the earth that does. I don't believe there ever was one that did. I believe that belongs to God alone. And God uses us 
to minister His power. Not us, but God uses us by prayer to heal the sick. That's right. It's prayer that changes things. But I declare this, friend, that Christ is the same yesterday, today, or, and forever, or this Bible is the false witness of Christ. If he's raised from the dead, he's got to be the same Christ. If he isn't, the, now his spirit is in the church. What spirit was in Christ? How many believe God was in Christ? Amen. Sure. Well, he went away and sent back the Holy Spirit in here to live and to work in the church and do the same thing to declare him to be the same. Is that right? Then he'll do the same thing. Now, did he claim to be a healer? No. What did he claim to be? He claimed to do just what the Father showed him to do. Is that right? Think now, St. John 5, 19. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself but what he sees the Father doing. Watch when he was standing one time and a little woman come through and touched his garment. And she had a blood issue and she ran out into the crowd because she said in her heart, if I can touch him, I'll be made well. And she ran out into the crowd and stood up, sat down or whatever it was. Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? He didn't know who touched him. I don't believe he'd be, there's no hypocrisy in Christ. So he said, who touched me? Everybody denied it. He said, but I got weak. Somebody's touched me. And he looked over the audience until he found the little woman. He said, it's you. You. You had the, little, had the blood issue there. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has saved you. It was her faith to believe that the claims that he made being the Son of God, that he was, and God honored that. Well, if he's the same yesterday and ever, you can touch him the same way tonight. How many Bible students know that's the truth? Raise your hands, preacher. Does the Bible say this? That he is a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities? Is that right? Certainly he is a high priest. Then you can touch him. Then how does he work? Through us. Whose hands at? Where's his hands tonight? Your hands. My hands. Where's his lips? My lips. Your lips. See? That's his lips. When it's submitted to him, he uses us. Just like to make a God out of Mary, a certain church. She was just a woman, not a goddess. She's just a woman. But that's very good for America today, anyhow. But she was just a woman that God used no more than any other woman. She's not a God. She's just a woman. She had to go to Pentecost and get the Holy Ghost, just like the rest of them did. Certainly she did. There's only one mediator between God and man. That's the man Christ Jesus. That's correct. No goddess, no saint, Christ. Now, if he's raised from the dead, he'll do the same thing that he did. If his body will submit themselves, you'll see the Holy Spirit come into his body and do the same thing. It no matter how much of a gift God would give me, if you haven't got faith to believe that God sent that, it'll never work. Look at the Roman put a rag around his, his face and hit him on the head with a stick and said, if you're a prophet, tell us who hit you. See? Critical. Jesus never opened his mouth, never said a word. But the woman touched his garment, just barely touched him. The Roman hit him, but the woman just touched him and went over because she believed him. He turned and said, your faith has made you whole. There you are. That's the difference. You've got to approach him right. Now, if he shall come at the beginning of this convention and prove himself alive. Now, you say, Brother Branham, if he was standing on the platform tonight, you think he'd heal me? He couldn't. He's already done it. He can't do it twice. He's done it and left the rest to you. If you believe it, you're healed. If you don't, you're not. That's all. If he was standing here, he could do no more about it. He couldn't save you unless you believed it. Then what did he promise to do? I'll show myself alive in the church until I come again. The things that I've done here, so shall you do till I come again. Then if he proves himself alive, what do you think about him? It's your faith. Not nothing I could do for you, but what he has already done for you. And you just accept it. Oh, I pray that God will let that get this group tonight. 
If that will come into this group tonight, there will not be a feeble person among us in 20 minutes from now. That's right. There won't be a feeble person in our midst. Why can't this be another Pentecost? Amen. Why can't this convention turn into really something that will shake the nation? Amen. He wants to do it. It's just because we won't let him do it. Oh, how he wants to take this convention into his arms and say, Children, I want to work with you. I want to work through you. He's trying to press his way into you. Just like a, just like all the water in the world put up in a four-foot barrel, four foot across, how many tens of thousands of miles high that would be, what a pressure it would be trying to get through. That's like the Holy Spirit trying to get into the church, trying to find a little crevice somewhere to bring itself into, to bless it, and to make it grow and to live, and yet we stay dry and hard. I don't know about that. Oh, my. Now, let those with prayer cards. Where would you start at one? Number one. Who has prayer card number one? Would you raise your hand? Tomorrow night, we're going to start. I believe that everybody that's on the ground, everybody receiving a prayer card or whatever more will be prayed for before this convention's over. So now just hold your card. Keep your card. We're starting something new tomorrow night. And I want you to sit. I'm just a little late. I would tonight. But I'm just, it takes longer that way. So, number one prayer card. Would you raise your hand? Are you sure you said one? Oh, I'm sorry. All right, right over here, lady. Number two, raise your hand. Three. Four. Over here. Four. four five. Raise your hand, please, so I can see. Five. All right. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Number 10, did I see your hand? Leaving off into another ministry, I pray that you'll grant this once more tonight. Grant it, Lord, because of Jesus Christ and because of his word. Grant it, Lord, because we're in this great shrine, your word, thousands of souls have been saved. Your servant, E. Howard Cadle, Gypsy Smith, B. E. Rediger, many other great men who stood here looking for this day. And partings leave behind them footprints on the sands of time. I pray God for the sake of this church that's living today to see this hour. Blessed are their eyes who can see. Blessed is the ears that can hear. To live in this great day, to see the things that our forefathers has told us would come to pass before the coming of the righteous one, the Lord Jesus, in a corporal body. That his spirit would be poured out, his church would be drawn together. Oh, Father God, speak tonight in a tremendous way and make thyself known to this people as we as mortals, unworthy, but as we submit ourselves to thee, may the great Holy Spirit that lived in Jesus Christ live in this body of people tonight anew. And may every doubt and every fear and every superstition and every ism be broken, Lord. And man will see and will serve Christ and be ready for his coming. For it's in this, this spirit that we come. It's in this spirit that we ask. It's by the Spirit of God that we ask it for the glory of God. In the name of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, amen. And if you'll be just as reverent as you can, keep your mind on Christ. Watch this way. Now look at here, friends. I feel, I don't know, this, may, this, this is my feeling. Not thus saith the Lord, this is William Branham. I feel that my ministry is closing in America. It's about finished. I want you to remember this, that Christ has raised from the dead, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is your hour. You remember that. If you regarded me to be God's servant, you take my word. I do not look for the American church to get any better continue to get worse. I believe there'll be droppings and powers and Holy Spirit, yeah, a Holy Spirit fall. Yes, I believe that. 
I believe there'll be miracles and signs done yet, but I believe as a nation, no, sir. I believe our day of grace has been sent away. Now, Christ is coming. All nations and all kingdoms must fall. Every mortal must give away to immortality. Don't disregard those words because it comes from an uneducated person. Don't regard it because of a, a person that I am. But regard it, because, regard it because this, that it's the Word of God. And it God himself, if I've told the truth, will vindicate it to be the truth. If I'm false, then my preaching's false, then my doctrine is false, then I'm false with it. And if I preach a perishable doctrine and a perishable Christ, I'll perish with it. But if I preach the imperishable word of God, the imperishable God, I'll live forever with him. That's right. I've done my best. I can't do no more except to God to shake your hearts to believe. Once more, I ask him in Christ's name to let this happen again tonight for the glory of God. Brother Bose, is this the person? I'll be just reverent, just for a little while. <clears throat> God has set in the church first apostles, missionaries, secondarily prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors. Is that right? God has set in the church. How our teaching was this morning. Up there in that room, blue room, what they call it up there at the Washington Hotel, that brother who preached the keys to the church. How right that was. How true it was in Brother Winston's teaching this morning on the discipline of the church. How that you, we misrepresent things. How can you build a foundation on something when you're misrepresenting it? There's nothing to build on. I here's a lady I, I guess I never saw her in my life. We are strangers to each other. I don't know her. And we're meeting here for the first time. The woman may be sick. Maybe it's financial troubles. Maybe she wants prayer for somebody else. I have no idea what she wants. She knows that. I know it. God knows it. You know it. The Holy Spirit knows it. Angels know it. I don't know nothing about the woman. Now, what if... If Christ was standing here with this suit on it, I got it. But she won't be because his corporal body's in heaven, sitting on the throne of God. That's right. Until all enemies, even death, has made his footstool. It'll be until he returns. But his spirit, the Holy Spirit, God, that was in Christ, has come upon us, and we are sons and daughters of God. Then that same spirit that made Jesus act in the manner he did makes the church act in the same manner he did. Do you understand it? Certainly. It's like gasoline in an engine. Electricity. Now, sister, if the Holy Spirit that was on Christ has come to the church and God has set the church in order by teachers and evangelists and pastors and seers and so forth. Do you believe that to be the truth? Well then, here we are tonight as a man and woman, like the Bible scene of St. John 4. A man and woman. Never met before in life, don't know each other, and here we stand for the first time. Now, but God knows you, He knows me. Now, if I would speak to you just a few moments, just like Jesus did to the woman at the well, and then God would reveal to me what you're here for, just like he did to the woman at the well. Would you believe that that's his word when he said the same things that I do, shall you also? Would you believe it? Would you accept that you're standing in his presence, not mine? Would the church do the same thing? You newcomers that's never been in my meeting before, never seen it. I want you to raise your hand and say, if you'll do that, i say to the woman here. I'll raise my hand. i never seen a woman in my life as far as I know. She might have seen me in the audience, but I don't know the woman. Is that right, lady? That's right. Raise your hand like that. We've never seen one another. And you don't have to be up there on the platform. You out there in the audience, look this way and believe. Find out. Look and say, Lord Jesus, I want to touch you. Let me, if this man's telling me the truth, confirm it to me tonight. 
I have a need of certain, certain thing, Lord. If you'll use his lips to speak, which we are the branches, you're the vine, you energize him to turn and tell me what my need is, I'll believe it with all my heart. Put him to a test. Prove me, saith the Lord. That's the scripture. All right, sister. If he does it, then that's all he can do. It's up to the audience, whatever they judge it to be, that's enough to you. Whatever they judge it, that's up to them. That have proved God, God's innocent man, because he's done it to fulfill his word. And what does he mean? To, because of you? No, sir. Because of me? No, sir. But because his word said he would do it. Jesus said he'd come and did these things that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by the prophet. And that's what is being done tonight, is to be fulfilled. God don't have to do it, but he said he would do it. And he's obligated to his word to do it. Now, I'm talking to you because you're the first person I've been a out from the meetings for seven or eight, ten days. I'm just wanting to see what God would tell me. If he'll do it, you'll believe it. Audience will too. That ought to settle it forever. I see the ladies all upset about something if the audience still hears my voice. As she's well aware that something come to her just then. If the lady will be honest with me, just a second ago, something come over you real strange. If that's right, raise your hand then. Did you ever see that picture of that angel? I've seen that light coming right down. If that's what's on you right now. That's what's making you feel that way. I'm looking right exactly at it. Kind of milky, misty around you. I see you going somewhere, but you're all upset. Somebody's told you something. That's got you upset. It's, um, it's something It's a... Uh, Oh, you're nervous because a doctor has been doctoring you, and it's something about your throat. And that was, uh, I see him look around behind you, shake his head to someone. It's a malignancy. No, it was. And they take it, and it's been x-rayed. And the malignancy has gone, but what you want prayer for is about the injury of the saliva glands. You can't get moisture in your mouth for the saliva. That's what you want to be prayed for. That thus saith the Lord. Is that the truth? Now, you know that there's something here that knows you then. Now, you feel a little different now, don't you? See, it's left from you. See there, it's just the perfect See, It's left from you. Now, you have what you've asked for. Because it's light. Feel that feeling? Real comfortable light? I've seen you swallow it. You're healed now. You can go on your road. You can go God bless you now. God be merciful and bless you. Have faith in God. How do you do, lady? We are strangers to each other, I suppose. Our first time, perhaps, meeting in life. But God knows both of us. And do you believe that he has raised Jesus from the dead? And then if he went away, he said the Comforter wouldn't come. But when the Comforter would come, he would abide with us forever and do the same works that Jesus did. Now, if I tell you, Sister, you're sick, I can heal you. You'd have a right to doubt that. But if he will come and tell you what has been, you know where that's been right now. You know that. See, it's what has been, that would confirm it. And if he knows what has been, surely he knows what will be. Well, that's his promise. Now, if the audience is still hearing my voice, a woman is seriously ill. And she's got uh, something like an arthritis. I see her getting stiff and can't move. Oh, and I see a dark shadow moving in. Cancer. And that cancer is in the back or spine. The shadow of death. You've been given up. It cannot be well. That at least that's what they told you. That's the truth. If that's right, raise your hand. 
Now, the doctor has done all he knows how to do, but the great physician is your sister. That's him that speaks, not me. That voice that was speaking just then, that wasn't me, sister. Frankly, I don't know what he said to you right now. But whatever he said, I know is the truth. Now, if you know that that presence of God is so close, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. If they'll pray, lay hands on the sick, they shall be recovered. You believe that? Let me just pray then, will you, sister? Now, I want the audience, if you will. Now, look, not only I, sister, my prayers is just a prayer of one person. Look at there, there's hundreds of people sitting there. They're going to be praying too. Won't you pray? Won't you be praying for this woman? Now, what if this was your mother, your wife? Let us bow. Now, blessed Lord, there does not lay in man power to heal. That lays in the Father God. But there is gifts in the church, gifts of faith, gifts of discernment. There are set in the church apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists. And this dear woman dying, your servant, the doctor, has perhaps done all they could for her. And they failed to get that enemy. But he can't hide from you, Lord. You know right where he's at. And with this great, mighty church praying, in Christ's name, I ask for her healing, along with these hundreds of prayers that's going just now on her behalf. And thou will not close thine ears to prayer, but you will hear and answer. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't fear. Just go as if it never had even happened. Walk in the strength of the Lord. I see him lead you up here. But no matter what's wrong with you, it was wrong with you. It isn't now, see? Prayer has changed it. It's from death to life. Straighten yourself up and walk in the name of the Lord. Thank you. Be well. God bless you now. Go on your road rejoice. I say praise the Lord. Now your prayers is what does that. Your prayers, your faith, joining with their faith. Now be real reverent and don't doubt. I suppose we're strangers to each other, but you know me. I don't know you. As far as I know, you might have seen me places, but I don't know you. I have no idea what you're here for. But Christ does know, doesn't he? Lady sitting there looking at me, just shook your shoulder then. Have a kidney trouble you're praying for. That's right, isn't it? You was praying just then, Oh, Lord, I am the one that he was speaking to. Let him call me tonight. That's right. Raise up your hand. You had, there you go. Raise your hand. You're healed now. Your faith has made you well. You're all beset about something. You're real nervous, but your nervous is not from any affliction. Your nervous is a mental nervousness. It's a mental strain. And I see someone standing near you. You are praying, and in your daily devotions, you're asking God for something great. You're asking God for something good. If God will tell me what that is, would you believe you receive it? You're asking God for a Christian home and you're praying for an unsaved husband. That's thus saith the Lord. That's right, raise your hand. Father God, in Christ's name, I pray that you will grant to her the desire of her heart. Amen. God bless you. Have faith. Don't doubt. Believe all things are possible. How do you do, lady? Suppose us being strangers to each other, our first time maybe a meeting in life, but God knows us both, doesn't he? I think it was merely the spirit power in the lady there. I know it's somebody back in here praying, but it was maybe the lady at the Just be reverent now, be in prayer. You believe that Jesus Christ, God's Son, raised from the dead, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever? You believe that he has given his spirit to his church and in his 
body here on earth is corporal, visible body of the church, the baptized saints of God in the church, and we now are introducing by the Holy Spirit the faith that was once delivered to the saints. You believe this is the same thing, just like Paul looking down, perceiving to a man, and how that the Lord met him and showed Simon on the housetop what to do, all the things just exactly. Paul going down the ship and he is praying down there and come out and said, Sirs, be of a good courage. The angel of God whose servant I am stood by me last night saying, Don't fear, Paul. You must be brought. You believe it's the same thing. You believe it's the same Lord Jesus that talked to the woman at the well? You're here for a growth to be prayed for. And that growth is on your shoulders. Your left shoulder. That's right. You believe? I see the more you talk to the woman, the more it takes. Why? Let us talk again. What was it? Something wrong. Wait, just don't tell me. I, see, I don't understand. It's just when I have to see it. You're not from Indianapolis. You're from another city. It's a big city, but it isn't Indianapolis. I see something. It's a great body of water near the city or at the city you live. And I believe I see the outer... It's Chicago. That's right. You're from Chicago. That is right. I see the Wrigley building. In the well, go home and be well. God, be merciful and bless this dear person who I bless in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have faith in God. Go on down. Do you believe? You believe God will heal you that cold and trouble unless you get well? Well, you're healed. You're faithful. Been scared about it, haven't you? Thought it's cancer. Scared of it. It isn't. You're healed. I never seen you, did I? I've never seen you. You touched something, didn't you? We're thirty feet apart, nearly. You never touched me, you know. But you touched the high priest, and he moved back through the branch. You see, that's how he, that's how you know. Sister, sitting on the end of your handkerchief up like this. You have a kidney trouble and a back trouble in your back. That's right. Well, you can go home now. You have your healing. Your faith has made you whole. Have faith in God. Go down. Believe with all your heart. We are strangers to each other. Christ knows you. Now there was, in the Bible, there was a man... By the name of Nathaniel went and found, or Philip went and found Nathaniel. And when Nathaniel came to Jesus, Jesus knows first thing that he was a believer. Behold, an Israelite in whom there's no God. And he began to talk to him and tell him where he come from. And that made a believer out of Nathaniel. I don't know what you're here for. I have no idea. But if God will reveal to me what you're here for. Or where you come from, or who you are. So, well, you, of course, you got your name of you there. See. Right. But if God will tell me what you're here for, will you believe Him? Yes, sir. I keep seeing a woman come up here, then it vanishes away. The man's praying for a woman, sister, and she's not from this country. She's in another country. I see two cities keep coming before me, two places. She is in Kentucky, and you're from Ohio. The lady has a female trouble in cancer and dying. That handkerchief that you have in your pocket, send it to her. Don't doubt, but believe and she'll live. Do you believe? 
and go. And may Christ make you whole and do these things for you. Yes. God. God bless you, brother. Have faith. How do you do, sister? I've never seen you in my life as a Noah. You have trouble with your ankles, don't you? Bad breathing. Believe with all your heart. It'll stop for you. Your back and legs bother you. Didn't you raise your hand? Yeah. You raised your hand, but it's the other lady. But your back and legs that bothers you. That's right. That face. Your trouble... It's in your arm. You're right on it. It's a tumor. And it's under your right arm and over your shoulder, in your back. And so much that you can't raise your arm. Christ can make you well. Do you believe it? You'll accept it? Let us pray. Dear gracious God, I pray that in Christ's name that you'll heal and make well this woman. Who I bless in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I walk out there at the side of the place. If you go out there, go believe him. Remember, that's death. It ain't God to heal you. Go out there and raise your arms up and say, Thank you, Lord. Go on your road rejoicing and be well. Let's say praise the Lord. Just obey what he says do. When he says do anything, go do it. Don't don't think nothing about it. Just go do it. I see the spirit of the angel of God standing near a colored man, way back under the audience. But he's a faithful believer. You're bothered with the rectal trouble, sir, and the rectum, like hemorrhoids. If you believe with all your heart, you can be well. You think in there, the lady sitting next to you, your wife, she's bothered with high blood pressure. Now you got it. Amen. There you are. Have faith. Sovereignty of Almighty God. No respect of race, color, creed. He respects faith to the people who believe in him. Amen. He's Jesus. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Are you believing now? You believe with all your heart? This could go on our act as long as it could. Tomorrow night we're going to start praying for the sick. It's praying them and praying. Other things too. Let's wait here this woman here. Let's stop her just a moment. Are we strangers to each other, sister? You saw me last, last year when I was up here? From the audience that's up here. I mean, I don't know you. All right. Here's this lady. That I do not know, never seen in my life. She said she was here last last June and was sitting out in the audience and seeing me. And that's the only contact we've ever had with each other, this woman and I. Now, if Jesus Christ, God's Son, will manifest his love before the audience, and if this isn't the faith that was once delivered to the saints, you've never read the Bible. And so you've never read the promises. You don't realize that it's See, you say, well, I've seen Jesus do two or three of those things in the Bible, but don't you, you I've never seen him stand with a whole row. Don't you know he said more greater than this shall you do? Not greater, could be as greater than quality, quantity, but not in quality. He raised the dead, stopped nature. See, you, you couldn't do any more in quality, but in quantity. More than this shall you do, for I go to my Father. This is fulfilling what he said. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is the faith that was once delivered to the saints only in a greater measure. The end times here. Now, before the Spirit leaves me, I want to see if I can talk to the lady just a minute. Just take my time and talk to you. You and I not knowing each other and meeting here at the first time on this sacred ground, this great, marvelous, tabernacle. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he will reveal to me what you're here for, 
You'll accept it? Will the audience with one accord believe that he's here? I want you to see, as far as I know, I have never seen the woman in my life. She knows that I know not a thing what she's standing here for. Is that right, lady? If that is, just raise your hand so that people can see it about this platform here. Here we are. You'll have to admit, if something takes place, that something here is supernatural. It, it, it is no make-believe. It's absolutely supernatural. Now, it depends on what you think it is. The scholars in them days says it's Beelzebub, the fortune teller, the chief of the devils, which fortune telling is the devil. And said it's the fortune teller, the Beelzebub. Jesus said, that'll be forgiven you, but when the Holy Ghost comes and does these things, it'll never be forgiven them to speak against that. But then he said that the things that he did, we do also. Here it is. The Jews in them days and the believers said it's the Son of God. Look at this woman, the woman at the well. She said, Sir, the Samaritan. What did the Jews say? Rabbi, you're the Son of God when he did it. What did the Samaritan say? Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. We know that when Messiah cometh, we know we're taught that, that when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. He's the God of heaven. He'll know the secrets of the heart. But who are you? Jesus said, I'm he. Now, if the Jews thought that about it, the believing Jews, the Samaritans thought that about it, what does the Gentiles think about it? This is your day. Believe it. All right, sister. Just as Peter and John said, look on me. See, look on us. Not to, in other words, look don't mean, it means just to pay attention to something. Just to speak to you. See what the Father will tell me. I don't know you. It's got to come from some supernatural resource then. This whole audience here has pledged yourself. If you tell me, you be the witness whether it's right or not. It never can fail. God. God permitting it. It can't fail. One thing, you have a sinus trouble up here in your forehead. Bothers you all the time. Causes headaches and so forth in here. See you a lot of times holding your head like uh, your head like it. You're real nervous, all upset, drop things, right? Have a thing of falling, stumbling once in a while too. I see you stumbling. That's right. That's caused though by arthritis. You have arthritis. I see you trying to move a chair or something around, getting around like this to a side plate. That's the truth. That's truth. And but you might know you're praying for somebody else. Something which is not here. It's in Tennessee. In a hospital. And the man has let's see, they're doing something about something around his arms. I see the doctor. No, it's a hardening of the arteries. And it's affecting his mind. And it's affecting his heart. And just a few days ago, he was praying and gave his life to Jesus Christ. That's exactly the truth. That's right. Amen. Now go believe him. And receive in the name of Jesus Christ. You want to be healed of that stomach trouble? Go get your supper. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Do you believe? You look very healthy, but you're anemic. <laughs> you believe by faith we can go to Calvary and have a blood transfusion? Let's do in Christ's name. I ask for your blood again. Amen. God bless you. Well, you have a stomach trouble too. You've had it for a long time. It's a nervous condition. Come on, many years ago, during the time of menopause, you got real nervous and upset. Since then, you've been thinking and walking and wondering. And of course, you have a Pepsi condition. You belch up your food and your stomach is acid. That's right. Go eat your supper now. It's over. Okay. God bless you. Have faith. I see blood dripping. Yes, it's watery. It's anemic. All right? You believe that Jesus Christ, God's Son, can heal you and make you well? Go and be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, may them words be created. Come, lady. You believe God will heal you, that heart trouble will make you well? If you do, go on your road and rejoice and thank God and be made well. You believe, every one of you?
Now look. Not excitement. Christ is here. God's word is made true. The faith that was delivered to the saints is operating in this building tonight. You be the judge. God's done his part. There's nothing else can be done but you to believe. Now, if I have found grace in your heart, you believe what I'm telling you as his servant, while the anointing of the Holy Spirit is here. If any person in here, regardless of what in your what is your trouble, heart, affliction, whatever it is, the atonement of Jesus Christ at Calvary taken care of that condition for you if you believe it. Nineteen hundred years ago, by his stripes, you were healed, already done, past sins. He has come and preached it by his word. He has sent his spirit to confirm his resurrection. He, personal pronoun, the Holy Spirit that Christ promised to send after nineteen hundred years is found infallible in the Cato Tabernacle tonight, performing the same things in the body of Christ that he did in Jesus Christ nineteen hundred years ago on the sandy seas of Galilee. What more could he do? I don't know nothing else that he could do that fulfills every word that he promised to the church. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Now I'm going to ask you something. I'll, how many sick people raise your hands? Now remain with your hands up. Bow your head. Christians pray. Repeat this prayer after me. O oh God our Father, I now believe with all that was in my heart. I believe in Jesus Christ, thy Son. And if I have did any sin, forgive me as I confess my wrong in the presence of God and of the Holy Spirit and of this church. And, oh God, I am needy of healing. And I believe that you're here. I believe that you're confirming your word. And I believe that someday I'll have to face you. And now, Lord, forgive my unbelief and place within me that faith that was once delivered unto the saints and burn my soul with thy love till I will turn my head from my symptoms and believe thy word. I now accept it with all my heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, just remain the way you are. That's your prayer. Now, I will pray for you. Just as effective, it'd be right here. And everyone pray for one another. Now, when you're praying, say, oh, the lady sitting next to me, the man right across from me, heal him, Lord. Pray for each other. See? Just look and see who's got their hand up around you. And you, you pick out a person you're going to pray for. Each one, pick out a person you're going to pray for. Don't pray for yourself. Pray for the next person who's got their hands up. Don't pray for yourself now. You be praying for the next person while I'm praying for you all. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, here I am once more standing here at the Cato Tabernacle, and I've had the privilege of standing here in your anointed presence to see the great I am, not the I was, I am, that stood at the burning bush that day and proclaim to Moses, This is my name to all generations. I am. And the blessed Savior who was anointed with God said, I am. And here you are tonight in the midst of the people claiming that I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. And, oh, God, as we are confessing our sins and our doubts and our fears and asking for mercy, look at these hundreds of hands reaching towards heaven 
and someone bowed in prayer asking for their neighbor to be healed. Pray one for the other, saith the word of God. No, oh God, I pray tonight with all my heart that somehow that real, old-fashioned, born-again experience of faith will sweep into the hearts of the people that every shadow of doubt will be taken away from them, but what they'll know that the person they are now praying for will be healed. And I believe with all my heart that you'll heal everyone that's in divine presence. And we adjure the devil who would make us doubt to leave the building, to leave the people, to get in the outer darkness. And may every person in here be delivered tonight in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Now to you that had your hands up, and beyond any shadow of doubt, you believe that the faith that was once delivered to the saints to take God at his word and call those saints which were not as though they were. Abraham called those saints which were not as though they were right now already happened. Do you have that faith that you won't look to what's wrong with you, but you'll call that which is as though it wasn't, and look to the promise of God. If you believe that, each one had your hand up, stand up to your feet. I believe solemnly with all that was within me that every person standing on their feet has received their healing through the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Raise your hands and rejoice. And I'll turn the service to the other one.